Internet Radio, WMDX. Uh, the John Gordy Show, as you might have heard there in the song, 92.7 FM, and of course, 1580 AM, broadcasting from the capital city, a couple of blocks away from the capital. That's and, right. And uh, yeah, we don't have to deal with the Republicans anymore. They're taking a 10-month vacation, which most people do. Uh, <laughs> and we are hell? we are live at Shortstack Eatery at 301 West Johnson, the corner of yeah. Johnson and State. And uh, we were here until 8 o'clock uh, this morning. We would like to welcome our guest on our very first guest at the eatery and it is john cavalla cartoonist editorialist columnist the whole whole shooting match and plus game author. inventor yeah. author that's right and uh <laughs> just one thing after the next uh, since the old days that we knew each other way back when you were doing columns yes. for the newspaper yeah i was i wrote state journal right yeah i, I started at the daily cardinal mm -hmm. here at the uw and I went from there to the Capital Times and from there to the Wisconsin State Journal, where I was a feature writer, a strip cartoonist, an editorial cartoonist, okay. and eventually <laughs> had me inputting the, um, they had me inputting the, um, the calendar. So oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you know, I, I remember We're doing everything. A little I, bit. I yeah. saved a whole bunch of articles, uh, and you had written about the family show, the earlier programs that we were part of. Yes. And you were you were a cr critic at that point, right? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. no, it was all it was all good, positive stuff. That's why we stayed friends. <laughs> But yeah, uh, then your uh, wildlife uh, you know, caught on, obviously, uh, you know, took off, and and then and then you were on your way. That was it, right? <laughs> well, the old comic strip wildlife took off for a little bit, and then it didn't. Oh, oh. it did. Okay, <laughs> so, all right. Um, you spun off some of the characters from wildlife. Yes, though. yeah. There are some of the characters still appear in my. Well, it's not new anymore. It's coming up to its thirty. Yes, a long time. Uh, the comic strip Dork Tower. Right. It was okay. a comic book and a. Um, it's now mostly an online uh, web strip. Mm -hmm. And you uh, do it a couple of times a week, is that it? Three times a week. Okay. Three times a week. Um, and yes, it's. I was one of the first cartoonists to post their work online uh, back in, this was before Dark Hour, back in 1993. Mm -hmm. I started, uh, I was working with a company called Steve Jackson Games down in Austin, Texas. And he had posted some of my illustrations online and i just read in wired magazine about this new thing called the web and mozilla and, <laughs> yeah, and, right. and so i went over to a friend's house who was a computer scientist and mm -hmm. said hey can we see this and the thing was you know back then extraordinarily slow extraordinarily clumsy yes. but you know the, uh, went to the to the what is now you know kids today refer to as a website mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and uh yeah the it started coming up. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. So very shortly after that, I started posting my comic strip Wildlife mm -hmm. online. It would run in the State Journal. It would run uh, with Chronicle Features uh, Syndicate. Um, and it would also go online. And so I was getting fan mail from all over the world all of a sudden. And it was just, you know, kind of really cool. Yeah. It was nowadays you're sort of used to that. And it's like, right. oh. Here's what's happening in Zambia. Well, yeah. well, now you're trying to think of different ways to market it or put it on online or at least feature it online. Yep. Uh, you did uh, uh, Dork Tower, and uh, that is that. That's the thing that has taken off. And now this, you brought in the Tower of Igor. Yes, that's the latest collection. And, and this is a collection. Now, yes. how many volumes of this have you gotten out? This of? is the tenth. Okay, for Dork Tower. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Um, and. I'm going to be launching a Kickstarter within the next couple of months because none of the web strips, these are all, all collections up to this point have basically been the old comic book. Mm -hmm. uh, Dork Tower was a comic book in the uh, 2000s, the early 2000s. Um, <clears throat> and it was a relatively, relatively successful. It ended up selling like half a million copies of the comic book in the 32 editions uh, it was printed in, uh, the issues. Um, but the online strips, there are about 2,300 yeah. strips online, which mm -hmm. have never been collected. And so you, Now they are. It's, it's going to start now, yes. 
So we're talking with John Kabalik here at uh, Short Stack Eatery. And John, tell us a little bit now about the gaming end of this, the, yes. the, the board <laughs> games. How did that all develop and, and what's that all about? Well, right? I've been a gamer pretty much since I was in school in England uh, back in the late 1970s. Okay. Uh, playing you know, the first, well, not the first, uh, old Avalon Hill board games, mm -hmm. um, Squad Leader, uh, classic games like that, Kingmaker, <clears throat> Escape from Colditz. And I've always loved gaming. It's mm -hmm. just been, you know, it's, it's, it's a great way, you know, to spend time with friends. There's the whole social aspect of gaming. It's interesting. It's, it's fascinating to me. Um, how did you come up with Apple Stamples? Oh, gosh. <laughs> how, how did that idea? I mean, Fast, it seems like a very simple, easy game. Fast forward 30 years. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so the late uh, um, 1990s, mid to late 1990s, I was growing very dissatisfied at the State Journal. Uh, I was a feature writer, and I loved the newsroom. I loved the atmosphere of the State Journal. I missed the people so much. Mm -hmm. um, but I was always writing about what other people were doing, what other people were accomplishing. Mm -hmm. And occasionally, I'd have to interview like a new cartoonist who would be picked up from the syndicate. Um, and I, I had to interview the creator of Foxtrot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so tell me, what's it like? A successful cartoonist <laughs> uh, must be fun. Very uncomfortable. Very must uncomfortable. Be, yeah. You must enjoy life a great deal. Um, and my wife, uh, actually, before she was my wife, uh, Judith, uh, we were six weeks away from the wedding, and my wife said, "Honey, you're miserable at the State Journal. You'll just quit, and I'll support you." Mm -hmm. uh, and so, five weeks before the wedding, I quit my paying job wow. uh, with insurance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, I just started up this, uh, well, again, having been a gamer for all this yeah, time, yeah. I started publishing uh, a, a magazine, a gaming magazine actually approached me to create a new comic strip for them. Mm -hmm. And this became Dork Tower. Dork Tower, right. And I, Carson the Muskrat was sort of imported from wildlife because I just loved drawing Carson. Um, and then I came up with a whole batch of new characters. It started running monthly. And I started attending gaming conventions, and I started talking with the companies who I had always, you know, loved their work. Uh, Steve Jackson Games. Um, I began doing cartoons for them for their in-house magazine called Pyramid Magazine. Um, and then a local businessman uh, who was also a gamer mm -hmm. saw that I had illustrated some card games uh, for Steve Jackson Games. There's this game called Illuminati, New World Order. Uh, which is, <laughs> it's, it's a hugely fun game, and it just, it, it takes all of the conspiracy theories and oh, makes them very silly. <laughs> and, like, who controls what and everything. Um, but he was forming a new company mm -hmm. in Madison, and he wanted me to be part of that. I was a little uh, sus about this all. It was like, oh, okay, a new gaming company. What can go wrong there? <laughs> Uh, but the first game we came out with was one that he designed, which was called Bosworth. Mm -hmm. And it's a, this was back in 96, 97. And Bosworth is a terrific chess variant. It's a fun chess variant, okay. but it's still a chess variant. Yes. And you don't form a company to make a chess variant. Yep. <laughs> Fortunately, the very first gaming convention we attended uh, down in Columbus, Ohio, a game designer came up to us with this giant sprawling game he had invented, which was called Apples and Oranges. Mm -hmm. And this was, uh, gosh, it had so many bells and whistles. It was a hugely complex game with lots of moving parts. And so we agreed to meet with him to check it out because this was totally new to us. It's like, right. oh, wow, somebody's bringing something to us. That's odd <laughs> and strange, but he does not look like a serial killer. So, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> And there were a lot of them. Yes. Lot of serial yeah, killers yeah, who gaming. were gamers. Yeah. And serial killers. This yep. is Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, um, true. <laughs> true. Uh, but anyway, um, so after one of the days at the show, we were at the bar at the hotel, opened up this giant game, and it was not a bad game at all, but there was so much going on. And one small point, uh, one small part of this game was you had a hand of cards. And you had uh, six or seven green cards, uh, so red cards, and then a judge. There would be a judge who was not mentioned before in any other part of this game. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, this one aspect, you had a judge, and you would, your judge would turn over a green card, 
uh, what's the most reprehensible? And everybody would play a red card face down, and the judge would choose. Mm -hmm. okay. And at that point, the founder of the company said, wait a second, this is the game. Exactly. And we moved mm. all the huge board and everything else, everything apart from these cards, off to another table. <laughs> yes. And we just started playing with these cards. Yeah. And it was a very simple thing back then yeah. with, you know, with nouns anybody would know. But we couldn't stop talking about it. It was a totally new concept. Um, it was a totally new idea. that We'd never seen anything like this before. And the whole drive back to Madison from Columbus, we just could not stop talking about this game. Mm -hmm. So we uh, began working with the designer. Um, and you know, we did a lot of work on our own, just tightening it up, changing it, bringing in things like flavor text so you could use any uh, noun whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd have an explanation at the bottom. I, I, I was the... I was a uh, I was playing a game called Magic: The Gathering back then, um, and the rest of the company wanted to make the cards the simplest they could be, so everybody would know what they were. It's like that's no fun. If we just put some flavor text on the cards, uh, then anybody can play any card. Elizabeth Barrett Browning, sure, that's reprehensible. He's <laughs> uh, sure. but uh, and so they they basically said, okay, smart Alec, you go and write this. And, <laughs> and that was so for weeks I was on our couch on my old laptop just yelling to my wife, Honey, what's funny about Kennedy assassination? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> honey, <laughs> what's funny about high school bathrooms type of things? <laughs> honey, what's funny, funny about mud? Yeah. Yeah, but being serial killers, that's how they start off yes, normally on yes. the couch asking those questions. Uh, Interesting stuff. But yeah, it was a it was a phenomenal uh, game. Nobody's seen anything like it yeah. ever. Um, it basically changed gaming, or mm -hmm. at least, you know, the sort of big box store casual gaming scene, because before that, all the games you could get were essentially trivia games. Yep. Great yeah. stuff. John, we got to take a quick break. Yeah. Sure. We're visiting with John Cavallic. It's John and Gordy along with Catherine Lake. We're at Short Stack Eatery, downtown Madison, at the corner of Johnson and State. Back with more with John Cavallic after this. WMDX 92.7 FM and 1580 AM and a very good morning to you. The John and Gordon show with Catherine Lake in the background at this point, because in that chair, it's John Kavalik, our special guest this morning, cartoonist, columnist, and, uh, and, and book writer as well. And we've got a question here from Catherine from the Lake. Gallery. From the gallery, if you don't mind, because I've known John as long as you guys have pretty right. much. And Time I, has no meaning anymore. I, <laughs> <laughs> I brought your game to Maine for my annual sojourn with my family, Apples to Apples. Oh. And they loved it. We made it an annual tradition for a while. But what was unique to us about the game, what you just mentioned, is that there's a judge. There's opinion. Mm -hmm. This is not Monopoly. Yep. This is not, you know, what is that risk? You know, yep. this is... A, a, an opinion game so that it makes you engage with one another and laughs are automatic. But we, when I went to dinner at your house a couple of weeks ago, we played another game of yours because you this is just one of like 300 <laughs> games that you've been involved in, quite literally, I think. Yeah. And it was another opinion game. Is, is, that, is that your thing? Yeah. Opinion games, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, games with the judge mechanic. Great question. Um, not... Judge Not mechanic. specifically, yeah, but it's it. a wonderful mechanic. And as far as I know, Apple Staples was the first with that. And you know, then A Car Against Humanity came along, and uh, other games came along with the uh, judge mechanic. D&D &D was not opinion, was it? Or was it? Well, not really. I yeah, mean, that's not. D and D's role playing, but yeah. you know, the, the dungeon master certainly has opinions at times. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but no, role playing um, thing. It's a huge thing, actually. It's it's bigger than it's ever been these days. Uh, board games are bigger than they've ever been these days. Card games are bigger than they've ever been these days. It's quite remarkable. Like there are not exaggerating between one and two thousand new games coming out every month. Wow! Now well, that many. Yes, and it's it's 
for store owners to keep up with this and to know what's coming out. So having a track record behind you at this point in the game, no pun intended, is actually a good thing. You yeah. know, people in the gaming community around the world know my work. They know my illustrations. They know the games I've worked on. I get approached by several game companies from all over the world every year to illustrate games, to work on games. Um, I've got my own designs, which I you know, need to get out there and start pushing a little more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's been where, where around the world are you really popular? I mean, is there... Oh, gosh, you, you, everywhere. You, okay. Uh, everywhere. I will go... I will be invited to conventions in Germany and Italy and France and Australia and Brazil. Really? And there will be huge signing lines. Um, it's when I was in... The, <laughs> the, the worst slash best was about a decade ago in Germany. I was at this giant games convention called Spiel, which is you know German for games, uh, held in the city of Essen, and they had nobody stopping the signing line, and so for three days, <laughs> oh, wow, I was you, know, you, you try to be polite because these are people <laughs> sounds sounds outrageously nightmarish. <laughs> it's like a, a story to a movie. <laughs> yes, it was. It just kept on. I mean, the line wow. would shorten, and then people it's a short line and get back in line, They'd jump in, and, um, and the worst thing was the. the the I mean, worst slash best thing was yeah. my German publishers were handing out blank Munchkin cards, uh, which uh, Munchkin is the other big game. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. more of a nerdy thing than apples to apples, but <laughs> it is a huge uh, bestseller around mm -hmm. the world. It's been translated into 19 languages. Um, and so having a blank card, everybody wanted me to draw on the card. Oh, good Lord. And Beautiful. it went like the three days. <laughs> it was like a seven hour, six and a half oh, hour, no. and another seven hour signing day. How I, cramped up were your hands? Oh, I mean, end, uh, God, you could come out with another vo a volume of cards that you drew up for yes. people. <laughs> I actually, I've actually asked uh, Steve Jackson Games to stop printing blank Michigan cards. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it's, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I will. I, I'm going to Modena in Italy in May for a convention. I've been invited to. I'll probably go back to Luca in Italy, which is the giant, giant convention, multimedia convention mm -hmm. in. Around Halloween, um, it's and then I come back to Madison. And I'm essentially anonymous. <laughs> yeah. and you're okay with that. Right? I'm around. okay with that. I would I would like it if some local bookstores were better about stocking my books. But you know, um, I've heard that story. My wife is a writer, and you know, trying to get it stocked, it, it's crazy. All right, now tell us about Dork Tower a sure. little bit for people who may not be familiar with it. Yeah, yeah, Dorktower.com. Check out the website. It's all there. Explanations about all the characters, how to pronounce them, why they are there. Uh, they're all gamers in this dark tower. They're all gamers. Um, it began as a purely gaming comic strip. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in this monthly magazine, or bi-monthly magazine. Um, and from there, it kind of grew to be just about more you know, my life and my friends' lives. Um, it's, uh, the web strip started out as just kind of a random thing. Um, but in the last, uh, we did a a very successful Patreon campaign to help fund it mm -hmm. uh, back in 2018. And that really let me devote a lot more time to the strip. Mm -hmm. uh, so strip now covers so many different topics uh, during, well, at the start of the Trump administration. Oh, that, that's I, right. You became a little more political in, yes, in your comics. Yes, yes. I, I, I quit editorial cartooning because I don't enjoy politics that much. Yep. A lot of my friends who were editorial cartoonists love politics, love hanging with politicians. I couldn't stand it. <laughs> so I was, uh, but then, you know, uh, my, my comics have always been somewhat political. Mm -hmm. well, they started, and wildlife began daily at the Daily Cardinal. And right. I had right. one of Carson the Muskrat's cousins was a Sandinista. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Um, but at the start of the Trump administration, and then again with the start of the pandemic, mm -hmm. I had to make a, a conscious decision because many of my friends were in pain from this. Many of my friends were uh, literal and figuratively in pain because of some of the what was going on in the world at that mm -hmm. time. Um, and so I had to think, am I going to use the comic strip as escapism and just avoid everything and make it a place where people can just come and relax? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to take some, tackle some of the stuff head on? Mm -hmm. And for my mental well-being, I prefer tackling it head on. 
But, yeah. you know, okay, this is a yeah. trash fire. Um, it is. I'm <laughs> it is. going to be writing about that. Yeah. So the, the readership actually exploded when I started bringing more social uh, um, aspects of the world into the work. You well, know, interesting. I lost some readers, but for the most part, it just... You know, in, in Dark Power, the only character, animal character, is my friend. Yes. We're talking yeah, with John Kavalik here yeah, at... Yeah. Short stack reading. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. No. No. I, 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 we have still so much to talk about. I know. We're all professionals here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're up against a break here, but yeah. uh, talking with John Kavalik here at Short Stack Eatery in downtown Madison, three hundred one West Johnson. We're going to be here for about another half hour, so if you're here, you can stop by, say hi to John and Gordy and John Kavalik and Kath Lake. We're all going to be here for a little while yet, but we've got news and weather. And John, can you stick around for a few I more sure minutes? Sure can. All We'd right. love to have you. Uh, we've got news, weather, and Pam Yonke with a uh, farm report uh, coming up shortly. And also a pair of tickets to give away to a Legacy Dinner Theater up in Wisconsin Dells for Liverpool Legends. We'll be doing that in our next half hour. Stay with us for more of John and Gordy live at Short Stack Eatery. Everybody Sing along. It's the John and Gordy Show. This portion of the show is being brought to you by Ed's Old West Exterminators, the only exterminators in town who kill your roaches after giving them guns and allowing the roaches to draw first. <laughs> Mad Radio WMDX 92.7 FM at 1580 AM on your dial and all over social media and try out the Civic Media app as well. You can call us or text us, give us a message there, or also any kind of social media source. Just let us know. And we do have a phone number that yes. Gordy, he loves phone numbers. <laughs> 608-879-TALK, 879-8255. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Wait, that, that just went out over the no, social just, media. No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, we are at Short Stack Eatery, and uh, I want to mention they have some special offerings today because it is, what is today? Is, today, is this tomorrow? tomorrow? This is tomorrow because tomorrow is pie day. See, it's 314. Oh, great. Pie so day they have again? pie day offerings tomorrow. Right. You can order a pie on their website until 7 p.m. tonight, and you can pick it up tomorrow. So that's a good deal. And uh, just you can get uh, key lime pie by the slice. They've got some, uh, some special deals there. So just go to the Short Stack uh, website. Is that right? Okay. And then uh, you, can, you can order up for Pie Day tomorrow. And we're visiting here. We're continuing with John Kabalik, who has uh, stopped by here. And we've known John for 30 or 40 years. Long, <laughs> of course, long we haven't time. seen him for 20 <laughs> or 30 years. Well, yes. Yeah. So hey. we're reminiscing with John Kabalik here this morning at Short Stack Eatery. Okay. That's right. We gave John a, a big boost in his career. Uh, <laughs> I, I owe it we all do to that you. with a lot of people. I owe it all to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. All right we're talking about, Great. Can uh, we get a piece of the action on some of these games that are selling worldwide? <laughs> millions of dollars. Darktower.com is the place to <laughs> check out his cartoons. And, and, and he also has the Apples to Apples and other games as well that he has put up. And, and Mattel bought it. Yes. Yes, and and that you know was a nice financial windfall for you. It was. I was I was actually <laughs> against the sale at yeah. the time, um, but I was very much a minority owner of the company, mm -hmm. and the majority owner was just sick of all of us. The rest of the other three in the company, <laughs> yes, I and guess he that just happens. Wanted out, and so when yeah. you're doing twenty four million dollars a year in sales, you don't really have the petty cash to buy a majority owner out. So we that had is to, true. We had that's sold, a lot. Yes, it was it was remarkable. Every year, uh, the sales would double. Uh, the, the game was wow. that new, that groundbreaking. Um, but we sold 4 million copies on our own. Mm -hmm. And, the again, the majority owner uh, wanted 
just yeah. he was done with the whole thing. And that's what us. a lot of people do. They they come up with these really great products that become very popular, and what happens is you sell it yep. to a, a major buyer, and you make a lot of money that way, and you can retire. It's it was uh, yeah when when Mattel. Uh, pulled up with the money truck it was like okay let's <laughs> that's it this sucks but it could yeah. suck worse yep. um, <laughs> i i knew in my heart that apples apples would become a cultural phenomenon and i wanted to be along for that ride yeah. you know yeah. we had worked so sure. much on this game we put so much into it um so it was very much you know mixed feelings you still, about that. You still get something for it uh, no no okay. mattel it, okay one, one still, time Sale. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I like to say that um, Apples to Apples bought our house and Munchkin pays the property taxes. All right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All worked out. And great. it pays for your lessons in Taekwondo. I want to get into oh, that. Oh, yes. Taekwondo. <laughs> yeah. How did you get into Taekwondo? Yeah. T- taekwondo uh, is not, it's not judo or karate. It's something. It's Korean. It's, yeah, it's Korean, Korean martial arts. Right. And my, my child, um, who seven years ago, their school an international day and uh mike mo the head of uh most martial arts at the time now known as level up martial arts uh, came to school with one of the other students and gave a demonstration and the kids were fascinated by this they were breaking boards you know very very light boards but they're having a hugely fun time yeah and, yeah and mr mo is very charismatic. He's actually an actor, a very successful actor. He played Bruce Lee in mm-hmm. Once Upon a Time in America. You have to uh, in Hollywood. Once Upon you, a Time in Hollywood. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he just, uh, there was a, I think it was <laughs> Apple TV, had the movie Ghosted with Chris Evans, which, where he was Mr. Mo, was the, now Master Mo, uh, six degree black belt, but he played the central villain in this. So, wow. uh, but he is extremely extremely charismatic, and I saw that all the kids loved this. And I went up to talk with him after the demonstration. It's like, you know, I'd like to talk about taekwondo lessons, and he mm-hmm. said, for you. And I was like, oh, no, 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 for my child. Yeah. Um, That's how it happens, that, by the well, way. That, that, that's how what it happens, happens to parents. How it happens is, you know, being in the West this long, uh, <laughs> there was the offer of a free uniform if you're a family member. There you go. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's, that's the attraction. I got it. Twenty-five dollars yeah. for four classes and a free <laughs> uniform. And I'm thinking, you know, oh, okay, Halloween's coming up. Um, yeah. yeah. So I started taking classes with my kid, and I just really thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And it was a great parent-child time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, Essentially belted up together every time, went going from white belt to orange to yellow to camo green. Um, you know, yeah, I, I had a similar experience with my really? kids. They were at kicks, uh, you know, karate. I think that's what it was. But they they just loved it. And they the thing that I didn't realize is that they love the discipline part of the sport. And, and that's what kind of attracted me to it. And unfortunately, they offered some kind of college education in regards to <laughs> <laughs> karate. And no, I wasn't going to buy into that. Yes. Uh, so the lessons ended at that point. But you kept on going with yeah. taekwondo. Yes. Uh, you even took a break, right? Uh, and, and now you're getting, are you back yes. into it well, again? Well, here's the thing. Um, but, yeah, you know, you're older nope. and everything. Your body is creaky. And barely <laughs> yeah, how, yeah, yeah, exactly. How's your hook kick? Yeah. That's, what, that's what I want to know. Hook Okay. Oh. Let's hear the hook kick thing. Okay, so, so, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, there are many, many, many things in the martial arts that kids can do that people in their fifties and sixties <laughs> simply can't. Right. Okay. Fortunately, at uh, Mo's now level up martial arts, mm-hmm. uh, there are many parents uh, who take classes with the kids and we tend to form like the back line when you're lining up okay uh, there'd, All right. there'd be two right. or three rows of kids and then at the back it's the parents because you line up by height and okay. in general um so it's sort of a support group uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like a level group you know yes. a lot of these exercise videos that you could see there's always the person in the back yeah. that is doing it very easily you know <laughs> hardly any movement whatsoever oh, but, oh so, so you've seen me doing burpees oh there you go uh, <laughs> yes um but no i i so my uh my child and i we became black belts together man black belt uh, wow. two and a half years ago and You're that was serious. probably one of the best 
uh, parenting days of my life. It was, I never thought that we would be able to do this together. Yeah. It was, uh, we went to the black belt ceremony. Wow. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, but the year before that, and through up through last October, I started developing arthritis in my hip. Mm-hmm. Not from uh, the taekwondo, but no. essentially from the fact that for a good 30 years, I was 30 to 40 pounds overweight. Mm. And mm. Um, so I finally, uh, the, the child and I got our second degree black belts last October. Uh, and I never thought that that was a possibility. I just sort of assumed once we became first degree, that the kids would just fly off on their own and right. just outpace me and everything. But I was able to just about keep up. And so we did our black belt test. And four days later, I was in for hip replacement surgery. Wow. Uh, are, so, you, are you recovering from that, getting back into I, it Yes. Again? I just had my first lesson um, since the black belt testing yeah. uh, on Monday. That's great. That's great. It Excellent. was. It was. It was actually fabulous. It was great being back on the. You get the movement back. It's. It's getting. Well, the thing. The two things which astonished me. Yeah. Were I got a far greater range of motion than I had before. Like there's, I can now do a hook kick. Um, <laughs> Good for you. I can now do round kicks. Which, you know, mm-hmm. things which required a pivot, and the pivot is when the hip would just go all kinds of yeah. berserk. Yeah. Uh, I would but, think the back would be a, a, a situation as well. But. Not really. This like you normally, um, uh, you normally uh, very steady in your poses. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not. Uh, there's not a lot that's going on. With okay. The back. It's going right. to be legs and hands yeah. and feet and arms. We're talking with John Kavalik here at Short Stack Eatery with John and Gordy and Catherine Lake and uh, John. What do you? What What is your type? What What do we call it? Cartoonist? Comic? Uh, uh, Gamer, what what do you go with in your car? Bon vivant. Bon vivant? Uh, yes. John Kavalik, bon vivant. Could, could we get a, a pronunciation on that? Oh, right. Let me line that up. You keep talking. We'll get the pronunciation. Okay, you know, when I was... I'm doing Duolingo first at the moment. So wait, do you sure really? Close. Really? Oh, really? Fantastic. Okay. That is the, the actual would, way to say no, the it. The would not be pronounced in French. Bon vivant. Oh, okay. There it's see. Uh, we don't even need to look this time. Okay. Uh, right. But back in the early 70s, I, I, I thought very seriously about taking Taekwondo because yes. everybody, I was working a third shift job in a book bindery, and, and, and all of the supervisors were Taekwondo experts. Ooh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, these guys were really, really good. Yes. But they were you know, doing these kicks all over the floor. Yes. It was just really you know obnoxious <laughs> so i did i decided not to get into it but you know at the time you know the spy tv shows were all using karate oh, yes. and everybody well, sure. was into this yes. thing you know and taekwondo <laughs> was just a better version of it yes i i thought i i love taekwondo um again it was just had had master mo been doing karate or <clears throat> yeah judo i would have gotten into that yeah. jiu-jitsu is not as fun uh <laughs> That's really? a lot of time on the ground. That's yeah. kind of oh, okay. your back. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, so you, you practice every day, or do you, I, I mean, try to. And you do the nunchucks and everything. Nunchucks. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah nunchucks. Well, nunchucks. Get into that, you're you're really good at this. I'm. A, I, I enjoy it. But but, but yes, you want a you're state a title or something, yes, right? Yes. In, in that the, means you're very good at the this. age group. It actually, it could mean that, or it could mean the fact that I just haven't died yet. Yes. Uh, <laughs> do you get hit? Do you, do you get hit with the nunchucks? I mean, doesn't it happen often? No, no. There is there is a um, there is kind of a padded weapon which you can uh, use in sparring, but for the most of the weapons nunchucks, nunchucks you got me saying it now. Wait, it's n- n- it's none. nunchucks. Nunchucks. Uh, okay. Uh, Shang Shilbang, um, Sh- bow staff, uh, sword. You're just doing a form, so you're running through a series of steps, a series of moves. Okay. And I just adore those. I mean, bow staff is classic. Uh, sword is fun as heck yeah yeah um and nunchucks were uh my specialty and yeah. so yeah i i was i'm the uh 2023 state champion uh american Ta- ata american taekwondo association wisconsin state champion wow in sparring and weapons no and you've, you've bonked yourself on the head with those things once come on uh, yeah oh, they're that, padded but yes, they're, but, <laughs> but it still hurts it, it can uh, but you get, you get good at it and in fact one of the i can do it now blindfolded uh which was actually oh, one of the things really uh, mr mo suggested for practice with the nunchucks <laughs> is just doing it blindfold so you know what the hand positions that's are going to be the force luke the force yes. that's crazy <laughs> wow okay well 
Well, we're talking with uh, Bon Vivant, John <laughs> Kavalik, here at Short Stack Eatery. We've got a few more minutes to go here, but uh, we're coming up uh, toward a break here. But uh, uh, before we go, we have to, uh, we've got a couple of tickets we want to give away to Liverpool Legends, which is happening at uh, up in Wisconsin Dells at the Legacy Dinner Theater. Now, these tickets include dinner and the show. It's this Saturday, and if you would like to go, you can give us a call right now. 608-879-8255. That's 608-879-8255. Again, it's Liverpool Legends. They're the Beatles band. They had a, their own theater down in Branson, Missouri for many years. Uh, it's one of the top Beatle bands out there. And uh, again, Saturday is the show, Saturday evening. It does include dinner at the it beautiful does, yeah. Legacy Dinner Theater in Wisconsin Dell. Right. So if you're interested in those tickets, call us now, 608 879 Eight two five five. All right. Well, we want to thank uh, John Kavalik for stopping out today. Hold and on. Uh, I'm calling. The... you're calling right now. You want to win those tickets? <laughs> <laughs> okay. well. And Dork, DorkTower.com. Check out the website as well. And uh, if you want to get into taekwondo, 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 you know it, that that is a fantastic sport. And and stay fit that way. And uh, I wish we had a little bit more time here to talk about all this stuff. Should we, we, we hold yeah, them over? Yeah, we only have a minute break here. But if you want to hang. Around oh, just yeah, a few well, more minutes. Well, yeah, we, we have a few we'll, more things. We'll we'll things. See. Okay. All right. What's that? Okay. <laughs> Again, Short Stack Eatery, that's where we're at. Tomorrow they have a pie day offering because yes. tomorrow's 314. So if you want to order their pie online, uh, you can do that in, until 7 p.m. tonight to you pick up your pie tomorrow. <laughs> and it, they also have key lime pie by the slice. Just go to shortstackeats.com. That's shortstackseat.com. Back with more of John and Gordy and bon vivant John Kavalik. <laughs> This is Mad Radio, WMDX, the John and Gordy Show with Catherine Lake and our special guest this morning, John Kavalik. Bon vivant. Did I say that correctly? I don't think no so. tea, right? Not, e- not even close. <laughs> okay. You know what? Hey, it's a lot. You well, know, yeah. we met, we're Mad Radio. But we knew each other at the old Mad Radio. Yes. I remember you stopping out W-M-A-D. and being on the, on the show yes. a couple of times at, out of the cornfield out there yes. in Sun Prairie. Do yeah. you recall that, some of the old days? I do. I do. When I first moved to Madison, um, I, I latched on to 92 immediately. Sure. And I, I got to know... Many of the disc jockeys, the, um, the programmers, everything. It yeah. was just a terrific yeah. scene. Yeah. Uh, and it was, for the most part, it was the music I enjoy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, fun days. Yes. It was, it, yeah, it was, it was a great radio station out there, even though, you know, we were in the middle of a cornfield. Yeah, yeah <laughs> uh, the building was kind of a dump in the studio, <laughs> you know. It but, was. But it was very laid back and very, yeah, uh, just an open air. Nice. I like the, I like the current. And, and, a, and a funny thing about it, I, I was looking back over some of the old newscasts. I, I recorded them. And I saved all this stuff oh. when we were shut down. Yep. But I found out that uh, the entire music library was stolen. Somebody <laughs> came in and right. robbed robbed the station yes. after it was closed down, and they took all the it albums. Was shut down by the, the bank. CDs. Yeah, they shut the, the <laughs> bank shut it down, but somebody had a somebody key. Somebody snuck in, and they got everything. That's, so. that's kind of sad, but also kind of impressive. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, we were talking, you know, you are you were born in England. You went yes. back to England. Uh, you had a, a slight English accent, which you, you're trying you, you don't really I, have I anymore. I don't think I have anymore. Every now and then somebody says, oh, I, I hear it. It's like, that's good, because I don't. Um, <laughs> I've been... Yeah. But you, you, you told, you said, you don't want to... Get the Wisconsin accent. I have been, <laughs> I have been an accent sponge all my life because we moved all over the place yeah. in England, in the states. Yeah. Um, and every now and then, my wife and her sister will slip into pure Fargo. Oh no! Get that. <laughs> really? It's like oh, oh. I, I, I'm just going to vote. A vote. I vote. I'm going to vote on a boat in a moat. And, <laughs> you know, 
Oh, yeah, that's Brett Favre. He's got another look. Like <laughs> there you ah! go. There you go. Yeah. Um, so... I, I just, you know, nothing against the great state of Wisconsin, no. which I truly love. This mm-hmm. is a wonderful place. Uh, and I've lived here far longer than any place I've ever lived in my entire life. But I will find myself catching, you know, myself with right. a couple of these pronunciations. <laughs> right. Uh, when I was, uh, you know, in the broadcast school, they tried to drum that out of us. Uh, so we didn't <laughs> talk like Wisconsinites. And I'm from Milwaukee, and it is really, really bad in Milwaukee. <laughs> it is terrible. It was a south side neighborhood. Oh, my gosh. It was just outrageous. But now, uh, if, if you listen to some of the radio stations, the local radio stations throughout Wisconsin, uh, that's the thing that, that they want. They want that Wisconsin accent now. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Even uh, I listen to uh, BBC Radio 6, and like my mm-hmm. favorite disc jockeys, so I've got these very thick Manchester accents, wow. up north accents, yeah. which you would never hear on the BBC 10 years ago, uh, or 20 years ago, certainly not. It was all you know, mm-hmm. English, the London, yeah. um, the posh London accent. So it's great, uh, but I did catch myself saying hockey a couple of days ago. And, <laughs> okay. <laughs> John, I want to ask you, what are you working on now? What's, what's ahead oh, for you okay, so in the near future? Um, there's some big news, which I can't... Well, oh, come I on. Can, Tell us. Well, the, the, the thing I can say is I'm finally collecting all the web strips. There are 2,300 comic strips online, which have, most of which have never been collected in book form. Ah. So there will be a Kickstarter within the next month or two for the first uh, collection. It will be called The Dork Web. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> wow, I like that. Uh, wow. But these will be strips from like uh, 2000 to 2002. And it's very, very odd um, going back revisiting your work from 25 uh, years exactly. ago. Certainly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it holds up a little bit better than I was worried about. Uh, so mm-hmm. um, my, my business manager has refused to let me change anything. Um, not, allowed to, <laughs> not allowed to rewrite anything. It's going to be sort of warts and all. Um, I'm hoping I can correct, I'll be allowed to correct the spelling mistakes. There you go. Uh, there's a huge <laughs> thing coming down with the game Munchkin, uh, which I'm working on now. Um, and Munchkin, again, is uh, other big game of the hundreds I've worked on. Mm-hmm. Um, you do the artwork for them. Yes, I've done yep. 7,000, more than 7,000. I lost track at 7,000 <laughs> illustrations for the game Munchkin. Oof. It's mm-hmm. been... Yeah, there's, there are dozens of supplements to the game. There are dozens of variations. Um, there's a science fiction version of Munchkin. Oh, there's really? Fantasy, okay. a, a basic fantasy Munchkin. Yeah. Zombie Munchkin, Cthulhu Munchkin... And again, this is really big in the uh, geek, geeky community around yeah. the world. Yeah, um, and you can order it online too. And it's on oh Amazon. Oh yeah, it's and... worldofmunchkin.com. Okay. Is the Steve Jackson oh, site, it but it'll okay. be everywhere. Early in stores, like you, you can't avoid I, I, it in stores. I see a chainsaw. Amazon. Uh, it's on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. That is on it. Or, or if you'd rather not support Amazon, um, <laughs> it's also in local stores like I'm Bored, Pegasus Games, oh, there you Mountain, go. Sure. Sure. Uh, Noble Knight. Uh, I forget the name of the one just down here on State Street. It's relatively new, but it's a lovely store. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you promoted Pegasus Games. Oh, but yeah, well, there's a store in uh, the strip called Pegasaurus, which is basically mm-hmm. Pegasus Games. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I was very, very good friends with the owners of the store when it was on State Street and then mm-hmm. moved out to Odana. And now it's undergone a change of ownership, but it's still a fabulous store. And yeah. so it's going to remain Pegasaurus in the comic oh, strip. Terrific. There are a lot of Madison references that you know people in... Uh, Essen, Germany, or <laughs> uh, Italy, really? you're probably not going to recognize. Right. Um, I've been drawing a room of one's own. No, not a room of one's own. I've been drawing mystery to me. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the characters is a librarian and a book fanatic. And so <laughs> whenever there's like a book strip, I'll put them at mystery to me, which is just such a marvelous store. So I love throwing these yeah. things in. And I'm sure, you know, uh, people in Brazil are going, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we are all out of time, John. Oh, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for going John Kavalik. Uh, again, sometime. And yeah, again, definitely. Uh, people want to find out more about everything that you're up to. Uh, the best website to go to is Dorktower. Dork, Dork, Dorktower. Dorktower. Com. Com. That's it. We appreciate you spending some time with us. Oh, it's yeah. been a blast. Don't be a stranger. Yeah, let's do this again in thirty years. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, we appreciate it. And uh, we want to thank our friends here from A Short Stack Eatery, uh, Alex and Sinead and everybody behind the counter and in the grill back there. And uh, also Catherine Lake and her sister Sherry. 
visiting for Virginia. Sam behind the controls back at the station. John and Gordy will be back here next Wednesday morning. We'll be uh, here tomorrow morning on the air bright and early at 6 a.m. We hope you have a great day. Take care. So everybody. long, everybody. From Short Stack. Woo! So long.